What's going on, everybody? Welcome into Sun Belt Syndicate, the 3B podcast, as we like to call ourselves, the Belt Baseball Beginners. I feel like I'm a real beginner after being gone on a little family vacation earlier this week. I've been scoreboard watching, to be totally honest with most of you. Luckily, our status, our local statistician, Marv, uh, will be on the case to provide us with a little bit more insight. Uh, and Seth is obviously going to bring his wisdom to the show as well. Uh, but he was in the same type of thing as me earlier with the family vacation early on. And uh, who's got the there ad plan? Yeah. <laughs> No How free ads. Sorry. No We're free ads, man. Oh, Sorry. man. Well, as always, we are brought to you by collegefootballdogs.com, part of Dog TV. And as always, again, Dubby, our presenting sponsor. You can go enter SB Syndicate at checkout for a little promo code and uh, lets them know that we sent you over there a little powder energy drink for those of you who need a little kick, which it sounds like Seth and I are definitely going to need here very shortly because of how our earlier parts of the week went. Marv, what about your week? How you been, man? Man, uh, just working, uh, working baseball, buddy. That's all I do. So uh, pretty routine. Very nice. Very nice. We've got uh, our Texas, our resident Texas State fan, already saying hello, everyone. Hope you all had a good Easter. We do uh, also hope you had a good Easter, Artie. And uh, I think, fellas, I had a pretty good Easter. What about you guys? Oh, yeah. I actually saw Marv on Easter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, that's uh, right. Yeah, the family went up to Boone, and uh, Seth invited me and uh, my oldest son Mason out to uh, practice with his little league team this weekend. So we got to uh, see each other and play a little ball. Nice. Uh, thanks for the invite, Seth. I didn't want to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry. <laughs> oh man, no. I- I'm glad you guys got to see each other. I know the three of us getting together uh, usually only happens during football season when we. We just plan on an entire day around it. So yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm ready to get back into watching more baseball now and uh, keeping up better because man, Tuesday was awful for the midweeks, and then Wednesday we had very few games, but we went three and zero yesterday. So that's good. Before we get into the weekend action, at least we had some good games to rally around after a a pretty terrible Tuesday, uh, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And as we talk about that, we'll go ahead and and, uh, tell you what our episode tonight is called. We entitled it, Where Are Teams Trending, right? We had some hot teams after this weekend, or we felt like we may have had some pretty hot teams. We had a lot of losses on Tuesday across the board, but we had some wins on Wednesday. Kind of where does that put everybody currently as we talk about where teams stand? So let's look at where the standings Hey, cause Marv, you want to talk about the uh, Cajuns real quick to start us off with eight and one? Yeah, we were, we were kind of talking before the show. I mean, twelve game win streak right now. Um, the, the best team in the conference until somebody you know takes a series from them. Um, you know, three of their losses came in that uh, that Astros tournament they played in. So I mean, they lost to Vanderbilt, one run to LSU, and then to Houston. Uh, no mm-hmm. one's going to get mad at you for losing to those teams. They're all quality teams, but. Uh, 12 in a row. Crazy that they were uh, they were 9-8 and eight before they went on the streak. And, uh, yeah, right now, if I had to rank them, I, I don't think the standings are indicative of where everyone's going to end up at the end of the season, but the Cajuns are the team to beat until somebody beats them. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll talk about this more, but we may have a pretender sitting right there at number two, right? I mean, is that yeah, maybe? Yeah, we were talking about that this morning. I, I think – I mean, they played some good baseball. They took two or yeah, three from – Talking about Georgia State, they took two or three from James Madison's past weekend, correct? I mean, I don't – we'll see. I mean, I don't – Big Georgia series coming up this weekend between them and Georgia Southern. And as we always pick with Seth, you know, Georgia Southern, when you were jumping ahead, and they beat, they beat up on South Carolina last night. They looked really good sometimes and really bad. So we always ask, who is this team? Um, I think I we'll, mean, find out. we'll find out who both these teams are this weekend. George Southern yep. sitting dead dead at five and four right now. Troy four and five. I mean, there's this middle of the pack right here. Like Mark was saying, I think Louisiana has kind of separated themselves. Uh, uh, Southern Miss, they are who we think they are. Still, we still don't know about Coastal. We're still trying to figure out Coastal right now, and 
Georgia Southern, that's a big question mark. Troy dropped a few this past weekend, but I think that top half right now, minus Louisiana, is up for grabs. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you guys, too, as well. And uh, what's, what's crazy to me, though, is like we're sitting there looking at a, a team like App, who's 5-4 and four in conference. But look at that overall record. One of the best overall records in the conference at 18-8. and eight. Um, you, you definitely can make the argument they haven't played some of the toughest competition. Uh, they did play Duke, and they are going to play Wake Forest. So, you know, they do have some tough teams, but maybe the, the number, the total number of good quality teams maybe isn't as high uh, resume building wise as others. I think they're quite a bit lower in the RPI. I think even what James Madison, Georgia State, is that what James we've right. seen? James Madison is higher than them. 34, 36. I want to say apps coming in right around 70 right now. Yeah. We're trying to figure James. I remember we were talking about that. The James Madison RPI is a little question. Very high. Yeah, 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 very high. It, I mean, the one win against Arkansas, we get that. But what else? They had one win against Coastal as well, right? But what else? I don't, I'm, I'm just not seeing the RPI, the they, reason why. I don't, think, I don't think James Madison has won a conference series yet. Now, uh, nope. so, and once again, uh, I think, you know, if App gets two or three of them uh, out of them this weekend, the games are at James Madison, then I think you got to start, you know, I think you kind of figured them out, but I don't know. I, at the beginning of the year, I was kind of hot on them. I was like, man, this, this looks like they could be a really good team. I'm a little surprised with their results so far in conference. And uh, uh, knock on wood, I hope their uh, their streak of not winning a series continues this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. Uh, so, you know, again, mentioning that I was on vacation, didn't do all of the graphics needed but what we're going to do is just put up the team we're going to be speaking about first and we'll pretty much go in alphabetical order uh, as far as that goes so if you see the graphic and that's just going to tell you who we're speaking about if you're watching if you're listening well just remember who we start talking about but uh first up is app state we just started kind of talking to it and alluding to it but they beat marshall 2-1 this past series uh past weekend yep. uh Seth, were you at any of those? I know Marv was, but I can't remember if Seth made it to any games. I did not. Marv, okay. uh, I know we had a letdown on Thursday, but then Marv, I believe the, the Saturday game you went to wasn't even close, correct? No, uh, it wasn't. Uh, we we 10 run ruled them in seven. Uh, so uh, kind of some of the highlights. Uh, in the opening game, uh, Marshall wins 9-8. Uh, App left the bases loaded in the seventh and the eighth. They got a run across uh, in each one of those innings. I think two in the eighth, um, but we left. You know, we left the game on the line in the seventh and the eighth. Uh, just kind of got off to a slow start. Tried to play catch up. Uh, good baseball game. The twenty three total hits, lots of action. Uh, second game uh, was a back and forth kind of deal. Uh, kind of late in the game, it got really interesting. Marshall uh, Marshall scored six in the top of the seventh. And App come back, comes back and scores uh, six in the bottom of the eighth and then closes them out. And then uh, the bat stayed hot for App. They carried that momentum from the eighth inning over. Uh, it was 15 nothing after two innings in the last game. Uh, it was uh, – it was we jumped on him. Uh, our starting pitcher, uh, he had a perfect game going after three. I think he walked a batter in the fourth, didn't go with his first hit until the fifth, ends up pitching six innings. Uh, gave up three hits, two runs, struck out seven, and uh, that that game was over in the second inning. Yeah, did you get did you get on the field afterward? Did it a, a little Easter egg hunt? No, we we didn't do the Easter egg hunt. Uh, so it was a warm day in Boone, which was uh, very nice. Uh, both of my kids got foul balls during the game, and uh, as soon as the game ended, it was pretty much. Uh, a common theme of the family that was there that they were ready to go. So uh, <laughs> yeah, we jumped in the car. Marv, Marv were you able to, did you have to shuttle or were you able to get a parking space? No, we got, we got there early. We tailgated, man. We, uh, we went to Jimmy John's and got subs, bought a six pack of beer and sat in the parking lot and <laughs> ate some sandwiches and had a couple beers and went to the game. There you go. Nice. Yeah, so so that's got, why your kid, your kids got foul ball. They got liquored up and they beat some kids up. <laughs> took the foul balls. <laughs> uh, do you know the Dickens boys? Obviously, <laughs> <laughs> it was Logan, especially. Now, it was uh, it was actually cool. So we were on the uh, we were on the first base side, which is where the uh, Marshall dugout was. And in the first couple of innings, there were some foul balls hit over there, and a Marshall player would come out of the dugout, and uh, my kids were there, and you know, super nice. Said, "Hey, can we have that ball, please?" And they toss it right over to him. So 
Uh, nice. Pretty cool for them to be nice and throw balls over to at fans when they're getting their face kicked in. Hey, hey, Dominic, after spending yeah. a few minutes talking baseball with uh, the Dickens boys, it's clear that we're the wrong ones on this podcast. <laughs> it just should be a Dickens family podcast at this point. <laughs> I sat and talked fi- talk Major League Baseball with Mark's five-year-old for 20 minutes about who who the Padres got for Juan, Juan Soto. The kid, I mean, these these kids, the knowledge of these boys is, I mean, we're clearly the wrong ones on this podcast. So so Marv makes them sit down and do two hours of homework and two hours of baseball study. That's why. <laughs> Listen, so uh, we only give our kids 30 minutes of TV time a day. and They've got to earn oh, it by, nice. by being good at school and being good at home. They come home and they watch um, – the MLB Network has like a baseball tonight. I think they call it uh, intentional talk or quick pitch. And like oh. that's their 30 minutes of TV. So they are as current as they can be at a young age of like what's going on in Major League Baseball. And on the weekends, we let them get a little bit more TV time. Uh, that's all they watch is Major League Baseball. And college, I make them watch college. But, um, yeah, they uh, they know way more than they should about Major League Baseball. Nice. Yeah. Not a bad thing. I, I mean, yeah, at least they're, uh, yeah, there's a lot worse things kids can be into. Uh, I like it. I like the fact you don't shove a tablet in their face and be like, hey, leave me alone. I got home from work. Go do no. something. <laughs> Not that I'm opposed to doing that occasionally, but uh, right. no. Well, it's better when it's a it's a seldomly used tool because then they really attach to it and it actually works when you need them to be entertained without bothering you. It, it is a reward, not a privilege, not a right. Yep. Nice. I like how you stated that. I like yeah. that a lot. But uh, hey, kind of going on the theme, you know, contender, pretender. Uh, yeah. Right now, what, what do you boys think about how apps playing? And uh, obviously, we know what they got coming up. They got James Madison on the road, then they got Troy at home. That's the next two series. I think you'll, you know, you'll have a much more clear picture after the next couple of weekends. But what are your guys' thoughts right now? I mean, that's been the theme the last few weeks. Is we'll let's wait for a few weeks to see what we can, you know, see what we think, but. I think it's finally time to say, you know, looking at these standings, I think, I think abs a pretender or excuse me, a, a contender. I really believe that. Um, two big wins against coastal, which like I said, I'm not solely convinced on coastal just yet, but like Dom was saying 18 overall and five and four in conference The like, like the saying every week, we'll find out a lot about them this weekend. Um, a little bit of a disappointing one loss to Marshall there, but you know, like we talked about last week, baseball is a grind and yeah. one loss here and there is not going to kill you. But I think we were talking this morning about, you know, including midweeks, our goal at the end is going to be 35 to 40 wins somewhere in that area. So now's kind of where the rubber meets the road. And, you know, you're, you're going to have to win about every series from here on out to have a shot at the end. But I don't see, you know, I don't see why abs not a contender. I, I just don't have, I don't see a reason yet, at least. I yeah, I I'll agree with Seth, especially when you loop in as he said. This your goal is thirty five or how many? What was your saying on the wins? Thirty to thirty five or yeah, thirty five to, to forty? I think. Yeah, I mean, if the goal is a regional, and I think that that's a goal for App that it could be attainable. Yeah, I think you got to be plus thirty five wins. The closer to forty, the better. Probably top four in the conference for regular season and. um maybe make it to the conference championship game. I think if they get 35 to 40 wins, top four in the conference, make it to the conference tournament final, I think that they will. They should earn a regional berth. They obviously won't host, but um, you never know. It's kind of what um, the Cajuns did last year. Now, the difference is Cajuns had a, a, a midweek victory over number one LSU on their belt, which unless App State beats Wake, which is no longer – you know, they are no longer who we thought they were at the beginning of the season. Um, here, here's here's the thing, too. You look at the rest of the schedule. They've already gotten through Texas State. They didn't win that one, but they they got through that one. Uh, they don't have Louisiana on there, and they don't have Southern Miss. So you've got a series with Troy, Arkansas State, Georgia State, South Alabama, ODU, and Georgia Southern. I'm not saying that's they're going to be easy. but you, all you're, bottom you're, half teams. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, it, Georgia, Georgia State right now is sitting second in the conference. I, I don't well, that's true. Yeah. I don't personally think they're the second best team in the conference, but they're better than what I thought they were going to be. Um, and then once again, Southern, Troy, ODU, uh, they're all solid teams. I mean, you 
you would like to think if they want to get to the regional, they need to take two out of three from each each and every last one of those. I agree. And then maybe get I a sweep, then maybe get a sweep in there against like an Arkansas State. Artie yeah. is right. That is a cakewalk. No Louisiana, no Southern Miss. Already took two or three from Coastal. Getting Georgia State. I mean, it'll really matter where that series is. Let's be honest. I mean, they could play right. that at Watauga High School, and there's going to be as many people there um, <laughs> in Atlanta. But uh, looking at the schedule, I mean, yeah, it's very favorable. I don't. No Louisiana, no Southern Miss. You know, I, I think as long as they take two or three. I mean, and. A, a, a somehow a close game against Wake or even a win, you know? Yeah. You know, I think wish that'll that, go a long way. Is that game in Boone? No. It, there was, in the game, it, was, it was in Boone last year. No, it's uh, the one in Boone last year, the third baseman for Wake hit a ball that's still not landed yet. Um, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> but uh, no, the one, it's not even at Wake, is it? It's at a neutral <laughs> site, I believe. It's at a high school in Shelby. I don't know why, but that's where it's at. I know Shelby, Shelby's got a nice baseball complex down there. I think they play the American Legion World Series down there. They have a okay. complex. So that, that yeah. it must be it, – so it's not like on a high school, but a high school plays home games there or something because that's okay. what I was describing. I but that, that makes more sense. League. It's probably a really nice field. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice but, thing. Uh The midweek games for App 2 outside of Wake are pretty favorable. But UNC Asheville, yes. Western Carolina, East Tennessee, which East Tennessee is a good ball team. Uh, I don't think we have midweek games the last two weeks of the season. Uh, we'll I don't th- you're right. I don't think we do. Mm-mm. High uh, Point – was it High Point they played on Tuesday? The yeah. high, and high Point was coming in on a seven-game win streak. And, I mean, the bat stayed hot. I mean, we, we jumped on them early. Uh, while we're talking about App real quick, uh, con- uh, consecutive weeks, App State has an offensive player of the week. Banks Tolly continues to just absolutely rake the ball. Uh, six for 13 in the series – Three home runs, scored five times, six RBIs. He's hitting six straight games. Uh, second in the conference in home runs with 11, third in slugging, third in OPS, six in RBIs, and eights in runs scored. Um, you know, not trying to be an app homer, which I am, and we'll say <laughs> um, You know, CJ's not hitting the ball that great right now, but he, you know, he, he's a great hitter. He'll get out of that slump. But when you have CJ, yeah. Austin, and Banks, one, two, three, and Austin's hitting the ball really well right now, and so is Banks. When those three guys get, you know, all of them are on the same page, and then you got Zamora in the nine spot hitting the way he's hitting, so that's a that's a tough lineup lineup to turn over. I mean, uh, I, I think as long as our pitching can stay pretty consistent and the bats don't get cold, we're going to have a chance in every series that we play. Yeah, yeah. While I, you're talking I, on that, Marv, uh, have we talked about transfer portal yet on this show? Uh, no, but we should talk about NIL here in a little while. That'll well, be- transfer portal, the whole giveth and taketh away. I mean, those two alone with Austin and Tolly. I mean, you talk about losing transfer portal. Look at those two pickups. You know, those two alone, you know, it can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing for App in that situation. Austin, when Austin was on the show earlier in the year, he talked about how many transfers in they had. And uh, yeah. it's showing right now with that ball team. Yeah. No, I'm uh- – Super impressed. Cumbert's doing a great job. I mean, if you look at the turnaround, he did not inherit the best program. Um, oh, don't talk about Billy Jones like that. Come on now. Listen, <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I mean, obviously, when Powell left to go to Duke, we had a great squad. And um, Oh, Billy Jones is an idiot. Right, Billy, go ahead and say what you want to say. Billy, Billy Jones train wrecked the program, and uh, Kermit's done a heck of a job digging us out. I mean, every, every year we're making progress. I feel like we kind of got through the – crap last year uh and you know last year was kind of the turning point and um man hopefully hopefully we can man a, a regional's best case scenario for us this year but damn it i think we can do it and uh i think we discussed at makes a regional uh us three will be there loud and proud yeah, for sure oh, yeah absolutely Art, Artie's disagreeing with us a little bit he thinks georgia state could be quality um we'll see We'll see. Uh, Neil is was was agreeing with you, Marv. He's he's obviously knowledgeable on the situation, like you. It is a high school field, but they play American Legion series there every year, and it is a nice field. So, with that said, I think that ends the App State talk, at least for now. Uh, Arkansas State is up next, and we've got Ben James joining us again. Uh, he's he's saying that uh, a state loss to Arkansas was costly, uh, but. They are number one, and it shouldn't be uh, it shouldn't be that bad uh, not to score 
a run, uh, but they didn't. They didn't score any runs, and that's one that uh, Arkansas State fans always want. It doesn't matter what the score is; they always want to go up against Arkansas. They want they want the bragging rights, just like the previous team we just talked about with App State. Whenever they go up against NC State or UNC, we the, our programs, our size programs and schools want those types of games because we feel like we just want to we want some bragging rights. So. Obviously, it's not fun to drop those, but it is expected, right? I mean, Arkansas being number one, I guess the only thing you could say is uh, current Sun Belt member James Madison did take one from them, so it doesn't seem impossible. Um, but you knew that you knew they were bringing the heat when they were playing an in-state team as well. Um, so, yeah, he says. Uh, plus, it didn't help the Hogs got uh, the wind is carrying the ball. It's so hard to do anything when that happens. Yeah, I'd say. Wind is a big part of baseball, as Marv and his kids probably know, and and Seth doing his stuff with coaching uh, teams as well. Wind can re- really wreak havoc on you when it's not in your favor for a game. But um, I didn't get to watch any of that one, so I can't really speak to specifics. But um, yeah, a uh, rough, rough going there on that one. <laughs> yeah, if if we're going off the whole the whole pretender contender thing, I think. We were a little, you know, we were pretty sure what Arkansas State was at the beginning of the season um, before we even started the season. And then we started questioning ourselves a little bit. Yeah. And then we were like, surely this, this will start coming back down. And then we started yeah. questioning ourselves again. Yep. And now I think we finally have our answer uh, of what Arkansas State will be. Not terrible. I mean, three and six record, 16 and 15 overall, but, you know, six. You know, half of those wins at the beginning of the season were for, I think, the Arkansas School of the Deaf, I think, is who they played. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I got a little hot on them there at the beginning. I mean, I think they started off with 8-0. No. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, yeah. last week they lost 2-3 or three to, to Georgia Southern. Um, just kind of a real quick recap of that series. Uh, first game was 6-2 Southern. Uh, Southern starting pitcher Ben Johnson threw a gym, uh, six innings, seven hits, two runs, struck out five. Uh, the entire uh, Georgia Southern pitching staff did not walk a player that game, so there was no no free bases. Uh, second game was a 10-run rule in seven. Uh, Georgia Southern uh, got 15 hits. Arkansas State only got two. Uh, last game, Arkansas State wins 6-3. Uh, they scored four in the eighth. Uh, Georgia Southern tried to get it back in the, the uh, ninth. They only got two. Um, seven errors in that game, so kind of ugly defensively uh, on both sides. But uh, from what I saw, both pitchers pitched really well. Um, kind of a trend I'm noticing is if a team wins the first two, like the, the last one's a really hard one to get. I don't know yeah. if they, it's kind of moral victory, hey, we won the series, but um, you haven't seen a ton of sweeps. You've seen a ton of two ones, and a lot of those two ones are um, – we haven't seen a lot of rubber games so far. It, it kind of seems like it's 2-0 and then you lose one. Um you're seeing more than that, the rubber games. But I, I'm going to agree with you, Seth. I think Arkansas State doesn't – they're not going to finish top four. And, and that's no. kind of to, – to me, just looking at, you know, historically getting teams into regionals, it's top four. And uh, I just – I don't see it. Not saying they can't get super hot. We saw them start super hot, but I just don't see it. And they've got uh, – they got Troy this uh, – yeah, they got Troy this weekend. Going yeah. off – yeah. Going off what you said, Marv, about not sweeping. I mean, like we, like I've hammered like baseball such a long season. Even, even a, and I believe I even called this Monroe taking at least one from Coastal. Yeah, you know, is that really a big surprise? You know, like you said, do what now? It's hard to sweep. You got to play. It's hard to sweep. Yeah, I mean, even your top team, Louisiana. If you told me Marshall took took one from them, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, two, that's a little bit of a head turner, but. I think Dominic hit the head, you know, hit the nail on the head last week with four teams. If we want four or five teams in this thing, we're gonna have to start seeing some sweeps. Um, somebody, you know, these top three or four teams are gonna have to separate themselves. And if it is Georgia State, they're gonna have to, you know, keep that momentum running through the conference. But I think the title of the show, you know, is perfect for where we're at in this conference because I think Georgia State will fall out and. I'm going to make a prediction that Coastal falls out too here eventually as well. Yeah, that would be a big one. That would be a are big you, one. Like, I, I hammered this a couple of weeks ago. Like, are we – Are and I know we'll get to it in a, minute, in a minute, but are we really impressed by Coastal right now? Nope. 
I was impressed with them early. Um, you know, does it surprise me that I took two out of three? No. Right. Uh, they lost to UNCW in a midweek. That surprises me. Yeah. Um, you know, ULM taking one from them. No, that doesn't surprise me. They got uh, ODU coming to the house this weekend. Right. If they lose one of those, that wouldn't surprise me. If they lost two, then I'm really going to start to question Coastal. But um, I'm still going to stick with them. Uh, I thought they were the best team in the conference, but I think you, you know, Louisiana is right now. But I still see Coastal finishing top four. Okay. Yeah. Do you, but, but but here's my question: If they finish, even if they finish fourth, is that still considered a letdown from where we Hold were at the end of the season? Hold that thought. Hold that thought because we'll get to them. I think they're coming up after the after these right. guys. So, but I, I did want to say I misunderstood Artie's comment earlier. He was asking if the field quality in Shelby is Georgia State facility quality. So I'm going to say it's uh, greater than Georgia State field quality, at least for this season. Uh, and then Artie was asking uh, Ben if Arkansas State has always had the red and black colors, or was that after the rename? Trivia question, fellas. What was Arkansas State's mascot before the Red Wolves? You, get, you guys know why they went through a name change? No. No. Political correctness at its finest. They were the Somebody Indians. Somebody didn't like their statue. They, they were, yeah, they were the Indians. So, of course, you cannot oh name gosh. yourself that. Give me a breath. And, uh, but, they, but they were red and black. James was saying that, or Ben was saying that they were, he believes they were always red and black. And then Artie said that uh, Texas State changed color hues because ULM colors were nearly identical so, yeah, a lot of a lot of teams in our conference actually had some changing of history over time because of, you know, not wanting to appear to be the same, right? Like Arkansas State and App State, just, you know, right here, back to back, A State, ASU, you know, it, it's teams have tried to go, you know, App State leans heavily on the App State moniker now because ASU is taken so widely across a couple spots. Uh, I know that when I used to tell people I live near ASU, they always thought Arizona state. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is anyway. And to answer, um, and to answer Artie Katz's question, I just pulled up, uh, put up some pictures of that, uh, American Legion world series stadium where they're going to play in Shelby. That's, yeah. a quality, that's a quality ballpark. That's a really nice. It's, it's like a, looks like a double a stadium. It's nice. Nice. Very nice. Uh, and Chris Bolton's joining us saying a lot of schools with a Native American mascot changed to a wolf mascot. It does make sense of, that they would kind of keep it. I mean, I, it makes sense, I guess. Um, I don't know exactly why, but it just kind of seems to make sense that it kind of does that. Um, hey, to close <laughs> my last thought on Arkansas State, I feel bad calling them a pretender. I think they're exactly where everyone thought they should be. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, and I'll say that they – yeah, let's see. If I, am I looking at the right one? Yeah, Arkansas State's remaining schedule. App State travels out there to Jonesboro. They do. Okay. Uh, they've got Texas State, JMU. Again, we don't know exactly where they're at, but not going to be easy as they travel to Harrisonburg for that one. Then they've got a – they host Southern Miss, mm. and then they finish up at ULM on the road. Yeah, it, I, I just don't think it's going to be easy enough for them to kind of start swinging. Okay, so you said eight wins to start the season, which was correct. They haven't strung two wins, more than two wins together since then. Yes, then yeah. So that tells you exactly where they're, you know, they're just on this like little itty bitty roller coaster as I uh, I can make a metaphor for what I experienced all week uh, being <laughs> down there at, at Legoland, Florida. No free ads, but Legoland, Florida uh, is where I was at. Uh, <laughs> So we will jump next into Coastal Carolina. Uh, we do have some uh, – well, we'll get back into the – CJ is asking about the JMU App State Series. We'll get back into that when we get to JMU again here in a little bit. Uh, and then uh, Tim Platt, our resident Georgia Southern fan, is asking us the original mascot or team name for Georgia Southern. It makes sense when you know what they're originally known for. What you guys remember what App State was originally known for when they first became a school, right? App State was a teacher's college. So was Georgia Southern. So what do you think their mascot was? Very simple here. Don't overthink this. A professor. You're close. The teachers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh yes. But, hey, I mean, that's kind of the cool thing. That's another a little history in the rivalry of App State, Georgia Southern, about uh, why it seems to be elevated is because they're both 
historically teachers, colleges, there's a lot of similarities between the two uh, in that regard. Oh, sorry. So Coastal Carolina, as you've said, Seth, ULM took the, takes the first game down there against them, but they do come back and ultimately win the series. And, man, I just got to touch on this. So those standings that I showed earlier, those are all corrected and updated, okay? Okay, right. When I first shared that graphic, it was wrong because I was trying to do it quickly again before going on vacation, getting all these things out. I just trusted the Sunbelt website, right? I mean, that's where I was grabbing stuff from. I didn't really do all the math in my head real quick. And they actually gave Coastal credit for sweeping that series versus ULM. And so I actually had ULM with one less win and Coastal with one extra win when I first released that graphic. Uh, And what's funny is, what's funny is that the only people that pointed it out was a Warhawk fans (laughs) <laughs> Mad about the fact that I didn't give them credit for one of their wins. There wasn't any Coastal fans giving me any crap about having them less wins. So that tells you where Coastal's sitting right now. If so they're Coastal's fans, five and four, right? And Monroe's yeah, yeah. three and six. Is that where we're at? Okay. Yeah, Monroe's third from the bottom in the conference. Uh, Coastal is, depending on where you look, uh, some people have at fourth and Coastal fifth and flip flopped. I'm going to say apps fourth just because we took a they series do. from them, but technically yeah. they have more wins than us. Right. Yeah, I still haven't looked. I, I meant to look up the tie-breaking rules on that, but I, I still haven't. Is, is Coastal haven't, still, is Coastal still ranked this week? They they are. They only in in fact um, is Louisiana ranked this week? Because if they're not, they, are, they, they are. are not. And I and I actually went on Twitter and defended that oh, because man. I agree with you. I think they should be ranked. You're talking about one of the hottest teams in college baseball. Um, I don't think they're giving credit for how good the conference is, sadly. And and I don't understand that because if you go and compare conferences, I think at this current time, I still believe that they're the fourth best conference statistically in the country, right? And we've been shouting this from the time we started this show that that Sunbelt is not a mid-major baseball conference. They're just not. They care more about it. They bring more people. They have better traditions and histories than a bunch of these schools uh, especially uh, I'm, I'm sp- specifically speaking of the big 10 when we're talking about baseball, a conference that doesn't even have every team, uh, every school field team. Yeah. So you want to tell me about, you know, big 10 being a better baseball conference. You can miss me with that. Anyway, uh, coastal is still ranked. They only dropped one spot in the uh, D one baseball poll. Can you believe it? From they 19 to how? 20. Why? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how they're even ranked to me. I would have taken them out and put Louisiana in. I believe it's called recency bias. Absolutely. Still right. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and I I do think they're weighing Coastal's start of the season more heavily. I mean, they did have some really impressive wins. But then when you Over think about who? some of those. Well, Wake Forest. Wake, but Wake. Wake Forest, Campbell, Wake. You know. They hung Campbell. Campbell. You keep sneaking Campbell. up on me. Campbell, hung, yeah. yeah. I'll give you Campbell. Yeah. Campbell, and, and Campbell has fallen out of the rankings as well. So it's not like it's still. You know, but sitting fast their forward, head. fast forward to UNCW, two to App, um, one to Monroe. Like, yeah, not. I mean, my ultimate opinion would be contender, but it's highly, it's borderline, just because of where we started. You know what I'm saying? Like, we were, yeah. we were building these guys up at, even through week three, and now we're starting to kind of separate ourselves and. I'm just not impressed yet, fellas. I'm sorry, but uh, no. I still think they're like I said. I think they're top four. I think at the end of the year, what, top what's four the, is fine. Yeah, what's the, I think they end up third in the conference. I, I'm actually about to ask Dom who, who do they have left. So I know this weekend they have ODU. Uh, mm-hmm. with, listen, ODU's mid in the conference. I think ODU's a hard out. I think they can pitch. I think their bats aren't as as hot as they would like them to be. But who who do they have after ODU? Get ready for this because it ain't easy. They got at Georgia Southern. They host Louisiana Whew. at Southern Miss. Ooh. Oh, sorry, they, they host Troy before Southern Miss, but they, they have Troy at home, then at Southern Miss, Georgia State, and then they end the season at Marshall, which might be their easiest out of all of them. But okay. then you're on the road to Marshall with a good – so far what looks like a pretty solid pitching staff there, you know. So their next five series are – God, I mean, it's – uh <laughs> if I'm a coastal fan, I almost feel like our backs against the wall and we're, you know, every weekend matters, which is, it shouldn't conference, but, uh, right. Ooh, 
Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, that's, that's going to be rough. That is going to be rough. Georgia uh, Southern on so the just, road, Southern Miss on the road, and then Louisiana comes to town as well as Troy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, doesn't get much harder than that. <laughs> I'll, re- I'll recap their series with you real quick. Uh, first yeah. game, they lost 11-3. to three. Uh, ULM jumped all over them, 8 nothing. start the game. Uh, 27 total hits. Uh, kid Sean Weatherby for ULM at 4 for 5 of 5 RBIs. Have yourself a day, kid. Uh, second game, 4-1 Coastal. Coastal puts up 3 in the first and just kind of coast, to be completely honest. There wasn't a lot of action after that. Uh, last game, 9 nothing Coastal. It looks bad. The Coastal scored seven of those runs in the uh, seventh and eighth inning. Uh, pretty tight ball game up until then. Uh, they did hit three home runs, and their pitching staff st- uh, struck out 12. But uh, nice. final score shows a blowout, but through seven, it wasn't a blowout. Nice. Yeah, makes a lot more sense when you talk about it like that. Already saying Coastal Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't doesn't r- ring off the tongue like Kentucky Fried Chicken, but, you know. Well, I will say this, Seth. After hearing what Dominic just said of who they have left, if they finish top four in the conference, uh, that's nothing to shake a stick at. They they definitely got uh, no. a tough draw. I'll give you that all day. I'll give you that. I'm just talking about the recent losses to teams that we didn't expect to be in the top. You know, App will give you, you know, I would expect you to take at least two or three from App. You lost that series. Don't necessarily expect you to sweep Monroe, but it still looks bad. And then losing the midweek this week, it, it's just yeah. not trending upwards. I guess is where I'm getting at on this. All this. Yeah. If they lose two to three to ODU this weekend, then I think it's full panic mode time for the. Uh, what, if, what if they? What if they do not sweep? Is it? Is I, I think. I, if you were to ask me right now if that was one of our series, I would say two to one Coastal. Just because I'm seeing how hard it is to sweep. Fair. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, going back real quick, Ben has a good question. This one's kind of obvious, I think, but maybe you guys aren't thinking about it. Trivia question, who's A-State's biggest rival outside the Sun Belt besides Arkansas and Little Rock? Memphis. Yep, nailed it. Already nice. guessed Central Central Arkansas, which is also a good one, but I think you, know, you don't want to be playing down. I think that's how a lot of people – would think, but uh, yeah, Memphis it is. They've already they do play them twice. They already lost. I think it was thirteen seven, uh, but they do have them again in late May or er, early May, I think. Actually, one more time uh, for this season. Texas State was also originally called Normal Normal College, which is a was a teaching school. Uh, cool, cool pictures from the nineteen fifteen uh, team wearing normal jerseys. Uh, I guess that was the just as normal on the jerseys. I'm sure that was that's pretty. Pretty funny to think about. Um, but, yeah, we'll have to see what goes on there. Our next team, I hope Tim's still watching with us, is Georgia Southern, who just – Yeah, we kind of talked talk about, about – Yeah, we talked yeah, about – Here's when we talked about Arkansas State. Yeah, 2-1 in that one. So, let's uh, – well, first of all, does anyone want to start off with saying uh, contenders or pretenders at this point yet? I still don't know. I don't either. They still baffle me. This might still be the one the team area. that we're, we we do not know anything about. They they've strung four wins together twice, and they've kind of gone you know two wins, two losses, one win, you know that kind of thing ever since uh, early parts of the season where they strung those four wins together at a time. Let's see what they've got left. I'll, I'll so, say this: they. They win the series against Georgia State. I'll call them a contender. They lose that series. They're going to be behind the eight ball. Uh, it, actually, yeah, go ahead and tell us who they have after Georgia State. Yeah. after Well, they got at Georgia Tech right after Georgia State, so that's not going to be an easy one there. I think they already played them once and got I think it was beat 10-0. there. What? I think it was 10 nothing. they lost to Georgia Tech. I could be incorrect. That was – that was uh, Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. Yeah, okay. So I don't think they played Georgia Tech. Maybe that was somebody else. Uh, oh, that was Georgia, State. oh, Georgia, Georgia State. State. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Marv, uh, Marv, if Georgia's I'm sure they, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I'm sure they love us getting confused between Georgia State and Georgia Southern. Oh, that never happens. Those fan bases absolutely love it when you, yeah, that's great. If Georgia ahead, State Steph. takes two or three from Georgia Southern, does Georgia State become a contender? 
I mean, it, when we get to them here in a second, I'm going to call them a contender. I mean, they're second place in the conference right now. I'm not convinced how solid that is, but yeah, they win that series. I mean, they've they've got a big leg up on some folks. Okay. No, just curious. So, Georgia Southern after Georgia State and Georgia Tech, they host Coastal Carolina. They go to James Madison. They host Marshall on the road at ULM. They host Louisiana before ending the season in Boone versus yeah. App State. Yeah, that's a couple winnable series there, and everything else is going to be a dogfight. Yep, I agree with you. Um, I, and I would say because of that, I mean, I'm, I'm also kind of on the fence with you. I'm like 50-50. I mean, if they can play like they did against South Carolina, then watch out. But if they play like they did against College of Charleston – yeah. And not so great. Midweeks are hard to judge. That's why, you know, you they throw those out judge. because kind of back to back nights, one was not a good performance, one was fantastic. But I mean, looking at Georgia Southern's record, it really is who are they? Five and four in conference and fifteen and fourteen overall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like that could not be any more dead even. Yeah. And so. I, I think I think we're about to see more of that. I mean, like you said, it's hard to to Sweep it's also seems to be hard to get swept <laughs> in the right. in the opposite realm of that. Um, so, but they've got to do some sweeping here on some of these lesser teams if they want to continue because some of these good teams that they play, you know, like Louisiana and Coastal Carolina and App State right now, you know, especially because they've got uh, only one of those or no, they do have two of those at home, I guess. Louisiana and Coastal both at home, App State on the road. So we'll have to see how that – I love the fact that they're ending with App State, Georgia Southern, whether it was intentional or not. Um, That's right. Great way, great way to end the season, season for both teams uh, before conference tournament play starts. So, all right, so we alluded to the fact that they're going to play Georgia State Panthers this week. Obviously, next in line are the Georgia State Panthers who uh, – which ones they, – oh, they, they took 2-1 from James Madison. We haven't talked about that one specifically. So, Marv, why don't you give us uh, – a little bit of detail on that series from this past weekend. Yeah, let me find. So um, I did full disclosure. I watched zero of these games, uh, but <laughs> just kind, of, kind of looking at the stats. Uh, so they dropped the first one to James Madison, fourteen six. Uh, JMU was up ten one uh, in in the fourth inning. Um, Georgia State committed four errors. Uh, just looks like it got away from them pretty quickly. Uh, when the second game seven two, and the last game eight to seven. Uh, I don't really have any notes for the second game. It just kind of looks like they they just won. Uh, last game uh, was a really even game. Uh, it wasn't a walk-off or anything like that. But, you know, once again, who is JMU? Uh, but anytime, I think, was that in Atlanta or was that in Harrisonburg? It was in that Atlanta. One. I remember watching it okay. on TV and it felt like we were like in – the Sandlot or something watching that movie. <laughs> I mean, it was terrible. I mean, listen, you take two out of three against a conference opponent. That's a good weekend. Uh, the record right now in conference kind of speaks for itself. Um, I'm going to say they're a contender until someone knocks them off. That's uh, they kind of earned that right now. Uh, now that I look at it, gosh, seven and two in conference, but they're 15 and 13 overall. Pretender. Yeah. Like I said, until someone knocks them off, but I do not have them uh, in my – like I said, I, I keep going back to the top four because I think the top four make a regional. I do not have them in my top four. I have them at six. Yeah, I, I don't have this team ending in the top four uh, this year at all. Um, so they've got Georgia Southern at Georgia Southern, as we talked about. I, I, don't, I don't think they play well there. We'll see, uh, especially with how Georgia Southern's coming hot right now after beating South Carolina. Then they do host, but they have Southern Miss coming to town next weekend. Uh, they go on the road to Troy. They come to App State. Or no, I'm sorry. They host App State. Yeah, man. Then they travel on the road, two series in a row, at Marshall and then at Coastal, ending the season at home again against ODU. I just I don't see – I don't see them being favorable overall in those matchups. And if they're not more favorable, I, you know, I, I, I lean toward the side of a lot more losses coming to them. 
Yeah. And with that, I, you know, at best you're ending up around 500, but I, I'd see them probably falling below 500 for the year. It's kind of, to me, they're a pretender at this point. Yeah. I might move them down to seven. What do we have? 21 conference games left. Is that, is that what we figured out this morning? Yeah. Everyone's got seven series left. Okay. All right. Yeah. And if you look back at uh, their start of their season was not good. At one point they had lost six in a row. No, was it five? Five in a row. Then they played some kind of weaker teams. You got Western Carolina and Army in there. Not real great. Then they've kind of just been kind of back and forth since then. So yep. for the last eight, nine games, it's just kind of win, loss, win, loss, win, loss type of thing. I just don't see it. I don't see it improving. Um, and I think for them to stay at the top, they're going to have to keep sweeping teams. And I right. just don't think that's – I don't think that's on the horizon for this team right now. Um, but, so, Marv, Marv, being being completely honest, if you've got four – Okay, so Georgia State would fall out, so you would have one open spot after your four. Is that what you're saying with it being Louisiana, Southern Miss, and Coastal? Yeah, so I mean, you, my top four, what I think predicting is going to happen, uh, top three will be Louisiana, Southern Miss, and Coastal. And then I really have the fourth team down to the winner of the App State Troy series, just my opinion. Really? Okay. Nice. Fair nice. enough. I think Artie was saying this against Georgia about Georgia Southern, but throwing it on this part instead, uh, we'll see. They're streaking wins as far as Georgia Southern is concerned. I'm going to come back to uh, Ben's comment, um, but just to let you guys know to be thinking about if the Sun Belt added two more schools, who would you want to add? Uh, and then Artie has some ones that he's thrown out. Again, we'll get to that after we wrap up. Can I, can I ask a clarifying question when the, the two school question? Mm -hmm. Is that just for baseball? Is that for all sports? And does it need to be a regionally make sense ad? That's wow. I'm going to, I'm going to say it's whoever you guys want to put, because it looks like Artie kind of went ahead and did that for him. Um, but Ben doesn't put anything on it as far as specifics towards baseball or just overall, I would say overall, because I want to add to football, basketball, baseball kind of thing. But East baseball Carolina would be my number one pick. East Carolina would bolster this conference and a lot of things. Yeah, I agree. Not so much for football, but the the Pirates will turn it around. I, mean, I, I was born no. and raised. I was born and raised in Greenville. When they when they get it figured out, they've got fan support. They got money. They'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking baseball and basketball. Here's an old school name for you, but College of Charleston, baseball wise and basketball wise. Pass. Yeah. They don't have football. Yeah, that's true. You want I want somebody to, for all sports too. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, you you, you didn't clarify completely. But. <laughs> oh, <Bama. laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so we'll, we'll get back to that because that one's a conversation that could go on and interrupt the whole thing. We, so yeah, we don't like to do that. No, no, no. We hate that. Uh, Georgia State not horrible, unlike their ballpark. Artie says. Uh, CJ is saying Georgia State streams are glitchy yeah uh Artie is kind of alluding to the same thing that the cameraman is probably balancing on crates out there at georgia state's field <laughs> <laughs> and Artie is saying yeah he, he, he at least all for sports. his reasoning he put all sports for okay. for what we're looking at there so we'll we'll go for all sports when we get back to that uh james madison is cj still with us we'll talk about that uh ab state series coming up this weekend they just Got beat by you know a team we just yeah, talked about, yeah, two talked about. Georgia State. Yeah. Um, now, I don't know what uh, Seth. Technically, you are covering JMU as far as a a featured thing. Do you want to start us off whether you think JMU Dukes are a pretender or contender so far this season? If if we're cl if we're clarifying. Let's say tops. I know Marv saying top four for regional. Let's say the top six would be our our contender kind of pretend. me okay. measuring point for contender. I, I don't. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it. No, uh, I know they have a decent RPI, but um, I think they're a little bit average or below average. Look at just I'm looking at these stats right now: three and six. 16 and 12 on the season. 16 and 12 overall. Yeah. Won a, a conference series. Have not won a conference series. Uh, nah. They won one against Coastal, one against uh, Georgia State. Um, 
And one other one, I forgot. Uh, one, one again, uh, one last weekend against Georgia State. And they won one against Georgia State, one against yep. Coastal. I forgot who the other one was. Um, Texas State. Texas State. Okay. Yep. They're four and five in conference as well, 15 and 14. No, not very impressed. Uh, not very impressed with JMU. But like we've talked about, if they took two or three from App or even swept App, I think this is a whole nother conversation next week. But – True. Right now, um, I would be shocked if App did not take at least two or three from JMU. So, no, I'm going to say pretender on this. Yeah. I think the other thing you got to look at, and, and then, Mark, we'll get your thoughts too, is a lot of the wins came early in the season, and you're looking at some of the teams they played. Obviously, the Arkansas win is, was huge, but they did have four tries against Arkansas, which a lot of teams only get three games. Uh, they got four. And then they, you know, they obviously took one of those. Then they played Fairfield in a series. I don't know much about Fairfield baseball, but I know I don't hear their name for baseball. So I'm not really impressed with the series victory over them or Cornell. So the six of their wins right there against two teams that I don't think anything of when I think of baseball. Uh, and so we'll have to see. Uh, it, like you guys said, I mean, they're just kind of holding on in a lot of these series so far. Then they've still got, you know, we just talked about App State's series this week week honestly it wouldn't shock me if either team won two one i just like we've said I, it's hard to sweep i don't think any either of these two teams are sweeping um right. I, we'd both we'd all love to see app state win as cj would like to see jmu uh win is in a sweep but i don't think that's happening for either side if i'm being honest just as what we've seen has happened so far this year then they go on the road to odu in state matchup there they play at home versus Georgia Southern, at South Alabama, Arkansas State, Marshall, and then Troy. So they really don't have the toughest end of the season. So they really could get hot and start winning more series than they're losing. But I don't know if that'll be enough if they if they don't beat the good teams in those matchups as well. But the, the lesser teams, they could and should uh, either win 2-1 or end up with a few sweeps on their side. So I, I think they're – baseball left. Yeah, I think they're I think they're right just like Georgia State to me. I think they're right there in that that mid mid six, seven, eight team in the conference, to be honest with you. I've got them eight. Um I cannot call you a contender until you win a conference series. So I'm gonna go pretender at the moment. I agree. Yep. I think I think that's fair. I think that's very fair. You know, I don't know how anybody could kind of go against that. No, the Dukes are just okay. They have some sunbelt growing pains in baseball, at least. Yeah. And then Artie's agreeing with uh, most of us here saying App State will take this one. This series, season series here this weekend, 2-1, and then another cakewalk schedule. Yeah, for James U, JMU, there's really no excuse. If they want to become a contender, it's pretty easy to do. You're, you've got the schedule to make it happen. I um, think but, they, move, uh, they move first pitch up tomorrow, too, to 3 o'clock. Hey. Yeah, the impending um, weather, I guess, that and, they're thinking uh, about. Yeah, and I told my boss this week that I have a podcast, so I hope he's not listening. But I'm going to cut out of work early tomorrow and watch the ball the ball game. <laughs> nice, very nice. Well, I'm I'm still on vacation. I'm not going back tomorrow, so I'll, nice. I'll I'll be checking in on that one. I'll be watching a lot more baseball this weekend. Uh, that is for sure. Just to throw this out there, maybe if they would have let somebody come on our podcast, then maybe they would have won a conference series by now. So yeah, that's no true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, Look what happened to App, you know, all of a sudden, and now JMU is just. We tried, fellas. We tried. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah, they did not get the syndicate bump. Yeah. No. No syndicate bump if you don't get on the syndicate. C- CJ saying the first pitch is at four, uh, not three o'clock. But if you uh, were looking at the. That's right. Because I look at the Sun Belt Conference and it's uh, from Central. From yep. Central. Ah, four o'clock. All right, yep. well, I don't feel so bad about cutting out of work a little early now. <laughs> yeah. It's only an hour now. Four o'clock on Friday. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, I do that all the time, too, man. I'm like, oh, mental math, I got to go back an hour on there uh, or add an hour, you know, depending on what which way you're looking at it for. All right, the hottest team in college baseball, as far as I'm concerned, I'm sure that there's other people that will say other ones, but it's hard to go against a team that has strung 12 straight victories together and sweeping, sweeping the Bobcats of Texas State, Artie's favorite team. Have uh, they three series in a row? Ooh, uh, that's to a be good question. Straight wins, you got to sweep three series in uh, in your midweeks. Yeah, I yeah. think you're right. Yeah, absolutely contender. So they swept 
they they went two one versus Arkansas State. They swept okay. ODU. They sw- no they do, they've only won they've only swept two in a row. Okay, so they're eight and one in conference. Yeah. All right. Wow. And we're talking we're sitting here talking about how rare a sweep is, and they've got two in a row, fellas. And the only team that took one from them is Arkansas State, which is crazy. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah, CJ works uh, for, for for you guys. CJ works for JMU. So CJ, go ahead and put in a good word for your guys at the syndicate and tell them that they need to allow some of their players on on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, who, who was the guy that, that rejected us? Uh, it was the SDI or the S the sports SID. Company, SID. SID. Mm-hmm. Yeah, CJ, pull some strings, man. Yeah, yeah. Get, we'll, get us we'll, in there. We'll them until after the app series, I can get the bump after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. Already saying Lafayette sucks so bad. <laughs> We're pretty good. <laughs> That's yeah. yeah already this one. Sorry, this sorry, one's not really you. one we got to spend a lot of time on. I think this is one hundred percent a contender. Uh, yeah, yeah. They they are a contender. Um, so kind of recap the the series real quick. Game one was four one. Uh, it was a just a pitcher's duel uh, from what I could see. Game two, UL uh, wins sixteen to five. They got up seven nothing. Uh, they had 16 hits and three homers in the game. Uh, and then the last game was a 7-6 battle. Uh, UL put up five in the top of the eighth. So it was uh, it was a really good – Texas State got two back in the bottom of the ninth, but obviously fell a run short. Um, but this one was in San Marcos. So for them to go to San Marcos and get a sweep, best team in the conference, contender. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I've got zero issue with that. I mean, anybody who doesn't think that there are contenders out their mind, uh, let's just take a look at the rest of their schedules. We've kind of done that with everybody else. Obviously, this week they've got the uh, matchup with in-state foe ULM. They play Marshall. Marshall's at home at Coastal Carolina, home versus Southern Miss, at Troy, at Georgia Southern, and then they host South Alabama. So, you know, Probably favorable for the Cajuns, but for anybody else, I don't think that's an easy schedule to, to end the season, really. I think – so you said uh, this week they have ULM and then they have Marshall? Yes. Five wins, five conference wins probably coming out of that. Sweep yeah. one, two out of three. Then Coastal, Troy so, – or Coastal, Southern Miss, Troy. Coastal, yeah. Southern Miss, Troy, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the meat of their schedule right there. But I, yep. I think the next two weeks they're going to – kind of cushion their their lead in the conference. I agree. And yeah. then towards the end, you'll find out who they really are. But, I, yeah, they're coasted right now. Yeah, and I honestly don't see a, a loss coming in between ULM and Marshall at all because they've got Prairie View, A&M in a midweek. Oh, actually, they have Law Tech. I, I missed that one when I first looked. They have Law Tech. Actually, a couple of their midweeks are a little tougher, so the Law Tech game is going to be hard. And then Southeast Louisiana, boy, is the the Lions are a pretty good baseball team this year. They got two straight against them in back to back nights on the 16th and 17th of April. So uh, those midweeks are going to be harder than, than their weekend series, I think, for the next two at least. Um, so we'll see. You know, tough competition. Maybe having those lighter weekend series versus conference foes it will play into their favor, uh, and they can go a little bit. Maybe they can save some of their better players and better starters pitching wise for some of their midweek games uh, because that may help their RPI more than these next two in conference series do. Uh, let's get back to some comments right here. Rivertown Sports Media saying Coastal will win the conference. That's quite the okay. statement after what we've just looked at and seen so far this year. But he, he's they're saying starting to uh, figure out the pitching. Maybe. Listen. It, w- would it surprise me if Coastal got it together on the conference? No. Do I see it happening? No. No. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. It, it wouldn't surprise me, but uh, it would be. It would be if we looked at it at the beginning of the season. If I if we were sitting here on the first podcast and I would ask or we would ask everyone the question, who do you think wins the conference? I think all three of us probably would have said Coastal. Absolutely. So wouldn't surprise me, but uh, just seeing the way that they're playing right now, maybe their pitching is figuring it out but i mean shit they gave up 11 runs to ulm so yeah yeah i I, man i can't remember what i said if i said anything but i wanted to say i was on the cajun strain um before 
Of course you were. Before a lot of people. And, and well, hey, here's why. I watched so closely <laughs> last year, and I did have them doing well in the conference tournament. And then they came out on top and they go on the run in, you know, postseason a little bit there. Didn't get quite as far as Southern Miss, but we knew Southern Miss was going to be probably not quite as good as they were last year with losing their legendary head coach and a couple of players uh, to graduation. So, yeah, I, I mean, I knew the Cajuns would really have it together. They've got a rich tradition and history there as far as baseball is concerned down there in Lafayette. So it doesn't surprise me that they're here at the top. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you're right, Marv. If you're talking – who's the favorite going into the season, you're, you're going to have Coastal up there almost every single time. Well, um, yeah, so. yeah. I'm just thinking about this with two, two comments real quick. Number one, the number one place in the Sun Belt that I want to go watch a baseball game is right there. Uh, if you – Where? Louisiana. Oh, okay. I, 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 I don't know when App's going to play there again, but, uh, man, I, that would be a uh, be a fun road trip. And uh, I'm hoping that uh, – Don, don't you have some connections with the Raging Cajun podcast? Yep, rage and review guys. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they'd uh, maybe they treat us nice when we were down there. So just look at the standings. They're eight and one in conference. They're a game up on Georgia State, two up on Southern Miss. If they win five out of their next six against, we'll call it weaker competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't think Georgia State's going to win five out of their next six. Southern Miss could maybe coast up. Maybe they can have a three game lead. You know, coming out of this in the conference. So um, you know, as hard as it is to sweep. Can anyone – can someone catch him? Yes, but is it feasible? Right. Uh, yeah, I, I think you're right. This is right here, right now, where they pace outpace everybody. Because of, because of who they have the next two weeks, I think this is where they jump out on top. And then it's can you maintain, you know, can anybody kind of catch up to them? And that yeah, they, will be the part. They sweep yeah. both of these next two weekends and everyone's playing catch up. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Agreed. Agree. Artie says uh, you didn't need to recap that series. Uh, he wanted you to move along. Nothing, nothing to see here. <laughs> hey, I, I, I just gently touched on it, Artie. Yeah, there you go. We, we tried to we tried to take it easy on you. Uh, Lukey and Johnson have found their way. Coastal about to go on another run. Well, I mean, you're obviously a coastal fan. We, we hope the best for you. Uh, we'll just take solace in the fact that App State took their first ever series from the Chanticleers as they came up the mountain just to. Hey, that, or two ago. that kid Bortle that they have, uh, he's the real deal offensively. That kid can hit the baseball. Yeah. Already saying he watched a little bit of the uh, Southeast Lions game, and they are good. Yeah, they, that's a, a sneaky team that I've just been made aware of really after this past midweek uh, and with how good that they are. So, yeah, that not an easy midweek coming up for the Cajuns in that regard. Speaking of our other Louisiana team, UL. Monroe coming off of a 2-1 series loss to the team that we were just talking about just a second ago with Coastal Carolina. Uh, boys, anybody thinking they're actually a contender here at this point? Because uh, I don't I don't have them as a contender here on my list. No, I don't think this is the one we should waste much time with. I don't, I don't okay. see this. Yeah, there's a few here. I mean, Marshall we can talk about for a little bit, but not this one. I feel like well, this yeah. one. Consider- I've got a- that ULM goes to Louisiana this weekend. Uh, they're already three and six in conference. Um, I'm going to put them with Arkansas State. They're not a contender, but they're exactly where they, I think, people thought they would be. Right. Yeah. They had, so I have a note here that they had a five game win streak, uh, but that five game win streak included a three game series sweep of Alabama AM. You're not getting a lot of credit from me for beating Alabama AM. Uh, other than that, they really can't put much together as far as streaks are concerned. They've won two games. Oh, no, they've won three games one other time together, uh, again, against kind of subpar competition. And then they're kind of doing a little bit of that James Madison thing where they're they're just barely holding on to not getting swept on a, some of these series as well. So, yeah, uh, they've got Louisiana this week, as we've talked about. They've got Texas State. Southern Miss, ODU, Georgia Southern, South Alabama, Arkansas State. Their next three series are killer. Yeah. yeah. They are dead in the water already, and it's only going to get worse if you ask me. So, uh, yeah, I don't see anything coming up. Roses for ULM, and I think since we all agree, we won't spend as much time. Unfortunately, a lot of Warhawk fans made some noise when I had the standings incorrect, but 
they don't jump on and make many comments here. So, hey, see you later. All right, time for Marshall. <laughs> uh, time for Marshall uh, coverage here. We just had them lose 2-1 to App, but they did take that first game. Uh, were you either one of you guys concerned when that one happened, be honest? I think we're a little shocked, but not – not overly concerned. Um, the one Mark went to on Sunday or Saturday, I think that kind of cleared a little bit, cleared a little bit up. But I don't think Marshall's a terrible baseball team by any means. But like Marv said, they may be a little bit better than what we th- we thought they were, but they're right where we thought they would be. Yeah, I yeah. think they're picked to be towards the bottom of the conference. Uh, I know that you know a couple people said, "Hey, they're going to be sneaky." They can be sneaky. They've got some good pitching. Um, their bats were pretty good the first two games against App, and then that last game it was just, buddy, you read body language, and they could not wait to get out of Boone. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, so when they when they won that first one, I was concerned because I thought, you know, what we just heard of when we had Chad on the show and he talked about how impressed he was by their pitching and thought about – he was one of the ones who literally told us that they would be a sneaky team. Right. Um, so I was concerned after they took that first one, if, if they won another low scoring game on Saturday or actually, I guess that was on Friday. Right. Because we had Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So if they had won another low scoring game on Friday that they take the series and, it, you know, app could hammer them in that Saturday final game. And, you know, you don't take much solace in the fact you still lost the series. So I was concerned when I saw that first uh, game score, unfortunately, but worked out for us on our side. They have not strung more than two wins together all season long. So to me right there, that's your pretender status because you can't, you cannot succeed in college baseball, any baseball really, if you can't put some winning streaks together. Um, So like you said, they've got some pitchers, they've got some players that they are going to need to continue to kind of up their game. Like I said, this year with the new home facility, everybody excited about the baseball program. For the first time in a while, that's great. But this is still a building block year. They they weren't ever going to be you know a regional team or a super regional team or anything crazy. Um, you were probably hoping at best that they end up near the middle of the pack. Well, I think at this point that's going to be probably not going to be seen this year either. Uh, let's see, they've got they are, they are the only team in the conference with a losing record. Really. Only team in the conference. Nine and eight, nine and eighteen on the year. We got a bunch of teams right around five hundred. I mean, Arkansas State sixteen and fifteen, ULM's fifteen and fourteen, South Alabama sixteen and thirteen, Texas State's fifteen and fourteen, but I think they're way better than their record. Mm-hmm. Old Dominion's fifteen and thirteen, I think they're better. Georgia Southern's fifteen and fourteen, Georgia State fifteen and thirteen. Uh so you got a you know, a lot of kind of middle of the pack teams there, but they they are the only team with a losing record. Wow. Yeah. And yeah, got, I don't think you got three teams that already have twenty wins. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, and then two, I and think then that's fifteen. That's one thing I'm going to look up for next week is uh, like comparing the Sun Belt directly to a lot of these other conferences, as far as like how many twenty win teams you. Got. I did that last year. It was really interesting to see where where it kind of put the Sun Belt at that point. And I think this is right around the middle point of the season where it would make sense to do it again. So maybe I'll I'll put those stats together for next week. Um, this weekend, they've got Texas State. Yeah. Don't think that's going to be easy, although they do have that one at home. Uh, then they go on the road to Louisiana, host ODU, at Georgia Southern, home versus Georgia State, on the road versus JMU, and they host Coastal. Yeah. At the end of the season. Their next two weekends and their last weekend are absolutely brutal. Yeah. Brutal. Yeah, and then going on the road to Statesboro when Georgia Southern's probably going to need that series big time, you know, yeah, and they're yeah. going to be mouth watering seeing Marshall coming in there. So, yeah, and if Georgia State stays hot, then that's not going to be easy either. So, yeah, I don't, I don't see this season improving greatly for the herd at that point. Uh, hey, unfortunately, they do a conference RPI for baseball. I'm trying to look it up. All I can find is individual RPI, but did they a conference like they do for football? I don't know if they do a conference RPI, but I did see that there is some stat. I'd, I'd have to scroll through Twitter, which I'm not going to do right this second. But, yeah, there was somebody who said that they're like the fourth-rated baseball conference in the country right now. What What is it? Uh, SEC, ACC, Pac-12? Probably. 
the so obviously the Stone obviously the first two you named for sure, but I would assume Pac-12. There's no way the Big Ten's all the way up. In fact, let me see if there's a single Big Ten team ranked. Or, off the top of my head, I don't think of one. So talking to RPI, and this is why I don't always trust RPI. So Sun Belt teams, Coastal at 23rd. I think that's appropriate. Next is James Madison at 31. Don't believe that at all. No offense to the James Madison guy listening. Um, <laughs> Louisiana's at 48. I obviously think they're better than that. Georgia Southern at 49. Uh, Georgia State at 53. I can, you know, Southern Miss at 57, Old Dominion at 61, App State at 65, South Alabama at 66. Wow. Hmm. So if you think about that, I mean, they've got uh, 305 teams on here. Yeah. Uh, we've got like eight in the top 70. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. So I, I did look it up while you were rolling through that, Marv. Nebraska, the only ranked baseball team in the Big Ten at number 24, so barely holding on to a ranking. Um, meanwhile, you've got Coastal in there currently. And again, this is the D1 baseball rankings on NCAA.com, so that's the so one. Are we seeing getting votes in that? Are they in like the yeah. others receiving votes category? So, There's unfortunately, that. at least on this site specifically, it only shows who dropped out. It doesn't show you how close anybody is, but it sounds like from what I – could ascertain from some Twitter interactions that they are right there, right on the cusp. They'd be 26, 27, 28, and just about every single poll. Okay. Um, so if they're not in there after this weekend, then I think you've got a problem. Um, especially if, if, if coastal loses anything, they should jump them for sure. Uh, if you're, if you're, you, you know how they treat mid-majors as what they – again, we don't think they are, but that's how they're going to treat the Sun Belt. So if you treat a mid-major saying, you know, you can only have one from a conference, that's really what they try and do in football specifically, right? So yeah. uh, if you're going to switch one out, that's that's the team it's going to be. It's Coastal for Louisiana in that regard. And then hopefully Coastal can keep going and, you know, we got two teams still ranked up there until we can get more than that. But that won't be easy. And, and surprise here, guys. Artie Cat is saying Marshall's going to win this series two games to one against Texas State. He's he's not high up wow. on his uh, Bobcats right now. Uh, yeah, if uh, if that happens, oh, uh, I, I don't I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. I don't either. Yeah, that would that would be a little rough, a little rough there, but um, maybe not shocking. I don't know. We'll have to see. All right, so we've got ODU who just took down South Alabama. Two games to one. This is a team where the bats are rolling, their offense is going well, they're going to win games. If they're silent, I mean, it's pretty obvious, I guess. This is really stating stating the very basics of baseball. But um, they can get hot, really hot with the bat. They hit 100 home runs last year. We always talk about that. They're, they're just – it seems like home runs are, are bust, right? I mean, that's – Right. They call them the, the, the Bud Bombers because I think they play at the, the stadium's nicknamed the Bud and – so, I don't know. What What are you guys thinking on uh, about ODU contender pretender? I guess I'll start since that since it's my team that I really cover. I've got them right there with James Madison and Georgia State as far as kind of like this middle coaster effect of like you, you're middle of the pack. I, I don't see you being a contender, and I don't see you being you know one of the worst teams in the conference or any by any means. But I just I don't see enough consistency to put them in the contender status. I'll agree with that. And they got Coastal coming up this weekend. I think Coastal takes that. Um, listen, I think they've got a good pitching staff, but uh, their bats haven't been that hot. Uh, so this series, uh, you know, they take two or three from South Alabama, uh, which I think that series, I think we'd all agree, you could have tossed a, you know, flipped a coin and you, whatever it landed on, I would have said they'll win 2-1. Uh, first game to win eight to two. South Alabama only gets five hits. ODU pitcher struck out eleven, so they do have a good pitching staff. Uh, second game was eight to three. ODU. Uh, ODU puts up six runs in the sixth and seventh inning to kind of pull away. And then rubber game, hard to win. Uh, South Alabama takes that one five to three. South Alabama scores four over the last three innings. Pretty even game. Uh, both teams actually pitch pretty well. Uh, but I, I'm I'm with you, Dominic. I I, I don't see that one. I don't see them contending for a conference championship or a regional spot. They're a middle of the pack team to me. Yeah. I know right before they got into the Sun Belt, I think they had one of their better baseball seasons in recent history. 
And then they got into the Sun Belt and they had a good overall record last year, but their conference record was like 500. I think they had like 41 wins, but they were like oh, wow. 16 and 16 in conference or whatever, whatever that works out to. It was just really strange. Like they, they, they really excelled outside of the conference, but they struggled to win inside the conference, which again points me to the fact you're talking about a conference that should not be considered a mid-major baseball conference because it's damn hard to win. <laughs> But right. teams that aren't even all that great inside the conference are crushing people outside of it. So, uh, you know, obviously some of that's just scheduling basics. But, yeah, it's a kind of a, a weird team. You know, again, they can be really, really hot and look really, really good. And then there's other times where they just don't um, don't really have many notes. It's just it's just no consistency from what yeah, we see. That's what we're looking for is consistency. And we're not seeing – much much of anything other than about five or six teams right now yeah yeah i will say as we've talked about a little bit like with already saying cupcake schedules for something listen to the the schedule obviously this weekend at coastal carolina that that part's not gonna be easy uh and they have they literally have east carolina on uh wednesday i think east carolina earlier this year did they not i think they did they did Yes, they beat them 6-5. Y'all, y'all see what ECU did to State the other night? No. 12-4. Wow. Yeah. ECU did. Yeah. That, that, I, we'll bring full circle when we talk about the two teams you would like to add with East Carolina. Yeah, and State's ranked number 19 this week. What's ECU, like 13, 14, somewhere in there? 12. 12, yeah. Jeez. And they were previously 15th, and then State was previously – number 22 so they both moved up so i mean hey good for them then how much well good, i guess how much you know i know this is a sunbelt podcast you know how much good college baseball we have right here in the state of north carolina it's very absolutely very insane. very good actually if you include the carolinas in general north yeah. carolina and south carolina you you could you could put a whole conference together of baseball greatness uh just right there I um like <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh so at Coastal Carolina, right? But listen to the r- remaining schedule here. This is just for conference play. James Madison at home, Marshall on the road, ULM at home, Texas State on the road, Ab State at home, Georgia State on the road. Not murderer's roll. You no. know, if they you can win the majority of those series, you know, you're, you're ending up maybe just outside of a top – four or five spot for possible seating for conference tournament time. I I think just like baseball, I believe everybody, I'd have to look back. Actually. I don't think everybody does make the tournament. I'm I'm looking that up as you talk. I got it right here. I have it right here. Yeah. So there's playing games. Not everybody makes the tournament unless they're going to change it this year, but I haven't seen anything that tells me that. Um, two, four, six. I think it's the top. 10. It's all. It's a lot of them though, because there's there was two play-in games really. JMU beat ODU two one in a game to get into the tournament last year. Georgia State beat Georgia Southern eight five to get into the tournament, and from there you top, had eight teams. So top, you had ten teams. Top ten teams make it. That's it. So I've already got it pulled up for this year. Uh, so you have seven versus ten, eight versus nine three versus six, and then the number two seed gets the highest uh, round one winner. Yeah, so top ten teams make it. Bottom four don't. Makes sure. sense. Makes sense. Um, I, I'm all for just everybody making it, to be honest, just like basketball anymore. And you just – why not? Yeah. <laughs> baseball, baseball is one of those sports even more so than basketball to me that, like, a hot team could just go on a tear, right? Mm. Hey, at least it's double elimination. Yeah, I do like that. That's why I think that's why I think you're going to have teams that are consistently better do well in a tournament style like that because if they can have a they can afford to have one mess up and then, you know, get back on the right track. So, you know, or or one star pitcher, you know, that they can't have go two days in a row, right? You know, so yeah. But I'm just looking at this, man, it pays to be one, two or three seed because if you're four, Absolutely. You, if you're four, you got to play the number 5 seed right there. I mean, that's a that's pretty tough. Yeah. No, absolutely. 
Absolutely. Uh, ben wants to cover a state for us. Maybe we'll have a conversation with them uh, for that. I know CJ has, has sent me some pictures from, from uh, some of the JMU stuff. So definitely I'll, I'll point that out and I'll share this later on socials too. But uh, if you guys want clips on the show, we cannot afford to pay for copyright. <laughs> so we technically can't show clips, but if you guys send fan clips in, we can start showing some of those things uh, when we talk about some of the games. If you guys little cell phone videos you want to send to one of the social accounts on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, you, you can do that. I'll try and put them into the show, and then we'll have a little bit more to watch, uh, especially if something controversial happens. You know, you grab it on camera. Even in still photos, we can have those up as we talk about it. So, uh, yeah. So just to throw that out there is something we could do as a possibility. Already saying uh, – Cake with a cherry on top. Already, you might have to tell me what you're meaning by that. Because I think he's saying their remaining schedule is a piece of cake. Oh yes, yeah, I got it now. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this, they, Coastal, App, Texas State. Those are the three series that if if they want to make a run, you're going to have to win those series. Yeah. Very very true. All right, so. What do we got now? South Alabama. We just kind of talked about them recently here uh, because they just matched up with the team we just talked about in ODU. Uh, they only took one of those in that series. What are we thinking for them? Contender or pretender? Um, Seth, do you want to start us off with that one? Um, I'm kind of a little burnt right here. Uh, South Alabama. Well, okay, while you do that, this is one of those teams that ended last year terribly. And they went on a massive losing streak last year to end the season. But they were picked to jump up four or five spots in the coaches' poll before this season ever even started. So there was something that people were seeing or noticing or hearing right. that led them to believe South Alabama was going to become one of the better teams in the conference all of a sudden after being one of the worst last year. Um, and they haven't won a conference series. Three and six Ooh. in conference. They haven't won it. That's a good stat there. Not a single conference series. So, yeah. So, yeah, you got JMU, South Alabama, ULM, Arkansas State, and Marshall have not won a series yet. So, um, to go back to my previous statement, until you win a series, you are not a contender. But I'm surprised that they're not higher than they are. Uh, I kind of maybe bought some of the hype coming in, thought they were going to be a little bit better. And I don't know. What's the remaining schedule look like? Maybe they put it together. Maybe they're just trying to figure things out now. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I'll get to that to start off. One of the reasons that we all thought we, we agreed with the coaches to start off the season six and zero to start the season. Haven't won more than two games in a row after that. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. There's your, there's your, there's your pretender status for me. Pretender. Uh, Southern miss this weekend. Yeah. Southern miss this weekend, Arkansas state, Texas state, James Madison, app state, ULM at Louisiana to end the season. Um, that's not that's not easy. No, pretender. It's not the hardest one I've heard, but uh, yeah, it isn't. No, it's not the most difficult. You're right, but you've got Southern Miss and Louisiana on there as yeah, well yeah. as at Texas State if they can get it back together, uh, and then you're going to Boone as well. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's no. a travel from Mobile to Boone. You're talking about a good travel. That's not a that's not a bus ride. I mean, maybe they do a bus ride. I, I doubt it. I, I would think they're flying for that one. Yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. tough sudden. Pretender. No, yeah, no, not much to talk about on that one. I don't think. <laughs> yeah, uh, already saying pretender, but getting better. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can see them. You know, they put some wins together. Let's just talk about just this midweek thing. You know, they had just gotten through winning the last game at ODU, lost the series overall, but then you 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 got a game. At, Against New Orleans, still very close to home. I think you could win that when you get stomped thirteen to three. New so, Orleans is a good team. We talked about that. They're good, but yeah, yeah. that's that's a it's a pretty good thrashing. Yeah, definitely, I, definitely yeah. a pretty good game. Bro. The box score. I mean, it could have been one where you know, they ran away with it late. It's a competitive game, but um, I don't know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, I think this one's pretty easy. But we've got Southern Miss up next. Contender, right? I mean, everyone's. On the train that they're a contender, right? I mean, no one's going to surprise number two. Here, are they? That's your number two <laughs> slot right there. Yeah, they yeah. Are. now. Yeah, they're the second team, best team in the conference. So, just real quick recap: two one yeah. series win over Troy, first game, uh, ten run rule them in seven, fourteen four. 
uh, USN jumped on them. It was uh, or something that's jumped on them. It was nine one after three. Um, they put together twenty hits. And it, how about this? Won fourteen to four. Have twenty hits, no home runs. Uh, so they just wow. yeah, they just moved the ball around the ballpark. Uh, Mazza, their start, their Friday starter through a gym. Uh, Troy wins the second game nine eight. A um, lot of action late in that game. It really got competitive in the the last three innings. And then um, good close game to end the series, 5-3. Southern Miss, just too good at pitching. And I, and I think it's kind of what we talked about. I think they have the best pitching staff, in my opinion, in the conference. And if their bats can get hot when their pitchers are throwing well, that's uh, it's a tough team to beat. Yeah. Yeah. Very tough. Yeah, they, they've only strung four wins together uh, at this point, but they've done the, uh, you know, two wins to one loss type of thing a lot more often. Uh, so they still have a, a consistency issue as well. But, yeah, definitely still one of those teams that you're never counting Southern Miss out, not in this conference. Didn't they shockingly lose a series the weekend before this? They did. Um was it Texas? Yeah, Georgia State? Southern. Yeah, Georgia Southern. They lost to Georgia Southern. Mm-hmm. So now Georgia Southern is now coming off of two consecutive series wins. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going going to Georgia State, man. That's a yeah. I have to I have to think that's going to be on our uh, our picks this week. Yeah, let's do. Yeah, it. we actually have to, we have to get on those because I got to get those out just so that we don't miss one like we did last week. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, so, yeah, and, and to note that they took a series victory from La Tech. So not a, not a conference uh, foe, but that was a, that was a, se- a weekend series uh, at one point that they had early on. Uh, let's see what the rest of their schedule looks like, even though we've got them as a contender, obviously, already. Uh, at South Alabama this weekend, at Georgia State after that, ULM at Louisiana, Coastal Carolina in Hattiesburg, at Arkansas State, and then Texas State at home to end the series or end the year. So it's a, a little tough, bit tough, tough ending there. In coastal Louisiana and Texas State, that's a yeah. I don't envy those last couple series. This is um, this is almost this well, even more so a situation of get your wins in now. Yes, uh, just like Louisiana to stay on top, and and Louisiana being chased right there by Southern Miss because. That back end of your con- your conference slate it ain't going to be easy. You mm-hmm. cannot be having to need to win those games at the end of the year, uh, and you could be looking at a regional shoe in right here with Louisiana yeah. and Southern Miss. That's going to be some uh, fun baseball to watch. Yeah, absolutely, no doubt about it. All right, we got a couple teams left here. Texas State already probably still with us, but uh, <laughs> let's see. We won't talk about the series. We all know what happened. <laughs> yeah, we, we did talk about the series already. So I've got another roller coaster right now currently. But, 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 I have them trending up because since we've already talked about the series, we'll jump right into this one. So if they've strung a couple four and five wins together. I think just four. I think was the four was their longest win streak of the season. But listen to this finish for conference play. Yeah, Marshall. Mar- at Marshall, at ULM, South Alabama, at Arkansas State, ODU, Troy, at Southern Miss. So you're looking at a tough last two series, right? Everything else should be extremely winnable. Already get your wins when you can, bud. <laughs> <laughs> it's not terrible. Not get, terrible. No, it's not terrible at all. I mean, if you're looking at this after the early part of the season, you're thinking we're going to cakewalk through most of this schedule until the very, very end when you got – Troy and Southern Miss of which Troy you host and you're going on the road to Southern Miss. So, yeah, I mean, I think you could. Their next I, I think, are, are Marshall, ULM, Arkansas State. Marshall, ULM in South Alabama, then Arkansas State. I mean, wow. You got, you got four all. series right there. I mean, you could yeah. write the ship in a hurry. Makes them round up real fast. Yeah, knowing knowing that, uh, I'm going to throw them into. I mean, obviously they beat App in the series. Um, mm-hmm. They got swept by the hottest team. Uh, I'm going to forgive that. Uh, I, I think that they can get right back on track this weekend. Contender, yeah. contender. contender, exactly. That's what I was going to say. On their schedule at least. 
Right. If you, if you look at where they're at currently in the, in the, the standings, you, you say like ah, middle of the pack team, but when you look at what they could do and what they're very capable of, I've got them as a contender as well right now. Let's see what Artie has to say since it's his team. He's watched them probably more closely than anybody that we know. Uh, I thought this team was a contender, but they're a pretender. The great pretenders, uh, total embarrassment versus Louisiana and Texas A&M season over. Anyone can take a series or even sweep Bobcats. No problem, man. Wow. Ooh, ripped them. Ripped them. Wow. Well, we'll see. But uh, w- we are trying to pump you and your boys up over there, Artie, because we've, we've got you guys as a good contender still. Until, until proven otherwise, we've got you on the contender status. Um, again, favorable schedule. And I know you've talked about that a few times. So hopefully that remains that way for you guys and you can get back into the winning ways okay last team and then we'll talk about teams we want to add to this conference uh troy goes down to southern miss two games to one again already talked about that series but where do we find troy they've been that kind of team that's uh, it's not one that we've been talking about as a as an easy win and it's not one that we're thinking that we're probably going to sweep anybody in either i i think this is kind of a middle of the pack team for me but what do you guys think? Contender, pretender for the rest of the season in the Sun Belt here for Troy? They got 20 wins already. Definitely a contender, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, like I said, and I'm, I'm going to backtrack on what I said Contending earlier. Contending for the six spies, if that's what we're referring to as well. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, honestly, once again, just my personal opinion, Louisiana, Southern Miss, Coastal, and then you've got App, Texas State, and Troy fighting for that 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 next group of three. Right. Yeah. So uh, I say pretender, or excuse me, a contender. I wouldn't kick them out just yet. No, nah, contender. They got uh, they got Arkansas State this weekend at Troy. There's two or three right there. If yeah, who do they have after that, Dom? So, all right, well, first of all, I'm going to sit, give Artie credit, contender all day. I'm going to go the opposite of all of you guys. I'm going to say they're a pretender. Here's why. They started off the season with two, four, six, eight, eight or nine wins to one loss, okay? Since okay. then, they've strung two wins together. That's it. And then they keep getting a loss yeah. in there. Plus the fact that here's their ending schedule. Arkansas State this weekend, like you said, at App State. Georgia State at Coastal Carolina. Louisiana at Texas State, James Madison. It's tough. Not easy. Not it's easy. Uh, to me, this this team is similar to ODU in like they can get hot, they can beat people, they shouldn't, and they should hammer some teams at some points too uh, because they're more than capable of that. But I just don't see the consistency recently. All the consistency with the winning aspect was at the beginning of the season. They haven't replicated that since. Right. Uh, and – with what we that. just talked about point. for the remaining schedule, I don't see. I don't know if I see enough to put them in the contender status. I mean, is that Troy? That Troy App series is at Boone, right? Yes, in Boone, correct. We were talking yeah. about that this morning, Mario. That's the one you were saying would determine a lot about this. Yeah, I, I mean, that's going to be. So let's assume that Troy writes the ship this weekend against Arkansas State, and App takes two or three. From James Madison, that series in Boone the next weekend is a, a pretty big series for both of those teams. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. All right. Well, that'll Contender. round out. Contender. The, yeah. See, I knew I could get you guys over on my side. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it wasn't. It wasn't clear to me until I looked at the remaining schedule, and that's why I said I just don't. I don't see it. So yeah. I don't see enough hey, of it. Coastal and Louisiana. What? Where, where are those Homer away? Coastal is in Conway, and okay. Louisiana is in Troy. Okay. So hmm. you do have that. All right. So now the topic that everybody will want to kind of talk about, which is which teams are we adding? Uh, Marv, you already went with something, but you said you had something you were holding on to, I think, on this. No, no, no. I mean, so – for the East, East Carolina makes a ton of sense. Uh, I think the American Conference is completely overrated. Uh, I think they're a like-minded public school here in North Carolina. Uh, you know, traditionally been a good football team. Baseball's fantastic. Basketball's okay. But if you just look at the other teams in the East, 
Um, it makes a lot of sense geographically. I've been sitting here for a while trying to figure out if you take one in the east, you got to take one in the west. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know who you would want to take in the west. I've, I've been through this exercise a number of times and specifically for football, but I related it to every sport along the way. So I took East Carolina like you did, I, just like you did. Geographically, they just fit in immediately. You've got uh, – almost equal distance and not even equal distance, actually ODU and ECU are extremely close Yeah, in baseball and basketball. That just makes sense as a, as a nice, easy rivalry. They've had a rivalry with, uh, with Marshall in the past. Uh, it, it, it just, it fits in really well. You've got, you've got the battle of the purple teams. If you conclude James Madison, you've got the, the natural rivalry with app state across the, the state. Coastal. Um, I, yeah. Exactly. I, I think that those two teams are kind of similar in some regards, like neither one's really at the beach, but they're kind of beachy schools, you know, that that whole kind of thing. I, I think they'd fit in great. Their fan base is awesome because they are huge in numbers. They're, they have a great following. They will go anywhere to watch a game. Um, they're not powerful at all in basketball. They don't really bring anything in basketball. They're not going to make the Sun Belt any more respectable if they come in in basketball, but they do do that in baseball 100%. In football, they have the capability to do to do that right we've seen how good they have been with how many guys they've put into the nfl so have you, have you have been to a tailgate at ecu i have yeah mm-hmm. i went when they played app what in 09 or 12 i can't remember which year i went uh first one whatever the first one was they almost won when armani was on the bench yes that was 09 and then in 12 we played them when um God, what's the quarterback's name? Came in late. He ended up going and playing for the uh, Saints for a long time. Uh, well, no, that was 09. That was Cadet. Cadet. That was 09. You're right. You're right. I think uh, uh, Jamal Jackson was the quarterback in 12, right? You are, you are right. Yeah, Cadet. Missed, you are right. Cadet missed Hillary over the middle on a fourth and 10 when he was wide open. Uh, yeah. But uh, at, at Rowdy Ficklin Stadium, is the, the folks in Greenville, they <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 you uh you will have a very 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 good time yeah yeah no i definitely did not have a bad time that was awesome um so I'll, let's get some comments in here before i get to my who's, west school who's your, who's your west school Memphis. Uh, oh yeah okay we'll get to that so i so we, we're bringing in ecu <laughs> be, being good good in in football or historically good in football and bringing a, a, another aspect to the football powerhouse that the Sun Belt has become obviously baseball they bring it up we talked about basketball not bringing anything I want to bring a team that we talk about as the the favorite every year someone who's going to bring some respectability to the Sun Belt Conference is basketball and that team and a state that we actually don't include right now too is Memphis Um, yeah okay If yeah. you got, if, I was just shooting from the hip. Nice job, Dom. Both of those teams, in my opinion, that is an absolute home run. I mean, we, we hit a home run when we got ODU, Marshall, and, and Southern Miss to come join. Uh, that's a, that's a, another one. Yeah. Well, I think we got lucky in one regard, right? Whether it was ODU or JMU, we needed one of those two schools to be good. We needed one of those two schools to come in and be good right away, which James Madison has been. Yep. Not that everybody loves that. I'm just saying, as far as respectability for the conference, you couldn't have a bunch of these teams come in and all suck. You just couldn't ha- have that. Yeah. Uh, Marshall, it didn't really matter if they were great or not coming in because you knew they have the capability with their history too, just like ECU, to be good for a long time again right away. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Southern Miss. They didn't have to be good immediately. They can rebuild. They can retool. They could get good again. Uh, ODU is the only one I still have a question mark about. I just think they're kind of a weird – Bit football wise right now uh there's nothing really wrong with them they just have a, a young fan like going to the game this year football wise their fan base just doesn't have it kind of like figured out right like they just there's not norfolk's not a sports town yeah well but their basket i mean they yeah. led the, the conference in basketball attendance when they had one of the worst teams in the conference like it it they Todd love basketball, basketball Todd waters a basketball area yeah and they've got they've got a football talent you know, for football, uh, high school wise, but they're, they all leave. And so there's no like tradition and history right there at ODU. And you could easily see that when you went to the football game, um, great people. I mean, I, I don't know if their tailgate was on par with anything I've seen at some of these like true, 
tried and true football powerhouses, but they, they're really cool people to be around and very inviting as well. Um, so definitely recommend going to a game there. Uh, nice little, you know, view from the top of the, I was at the very top of the stadium, but it's a nice, cool view to see out there uh, and see everything like that. But yeah. Um, yeah. So Memphis for me was, was my West team going back to that point though. And I guess Seth, that was what you had there too. Did you have a team in the East you were thinking of? Uh, no. Uh, for once I've been sitting here thinking, I can't think of anything. Uh, Memphis is what came to mind for the West though. Um, I'll think about it for next week, but I don't have any solid teams. So I was just thinking about this, you know, the, the American athletic wanted to call themselves, uh, you know, the P six that, that was their kind of their, their tagline, you know, they had uh, UCF, you know, who claims the national championship in football with realignment. Some things have happened with them. Uh, so I guess what I'm trying to get at is probably a couple of years ago, those two schools moving to the Sun Belt would have been seen as a downgrade by their fan right. base, their administration. Do they still view it that way? Because I'm looking at who's in their conference right now. Temple, Tulsa, Charlotte, Fort Atlantic, UAB, North Texas, Navy, Rice, USF, Memphis, ECU, UTSA, Tulane, and SMU. Yeah, but look where well, the SMU's leading. are, though, Marv. Oh, oh, it's, oh, that's a no. That's a that would bolster our media market. You're, you're correct. Their their media markets are way bigger than ours. I'm sure their ESPN. Yeah, did, it's the market, man. More. But you know, do you want to play North Texas? You give a shit about playing Charlotte? You know, I mean, I yeah. Don't know. So I've got I've got some interesting ones here. So I'm going to put Artie's comment back on from way earlier. Uh, University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, kind of an interesting move up. Definitely helps that Texas area and FIU since it's in Miami because Miami visits are nice. So one in the West, one in the East, both previous members of the uh, Sun Belt. So that's a that's an interesting take because, you know, maybe there is some history there that lends to the fact that they could get back in our boy, uh, our Cajun. Yo boy car says, what's up guys joining us right here towards the end. And uh, Ben is saying, if you had to add a team in the West, I'd say Southeast Missouri state, AKA SEMO. Yeah. SEMO's kind of become a little bit bigger of a brand here lately. I think they've, they've been decent in basketball and they've, they've had some teams in baseball, I think even too, uh, or he's saying central, central Arkansas, even maybe. Uh, your boy Carr's throwing out Tarleton State, average 18,000 per game for football. Fourth in all of FCS would give Texas State a Texas mate. Yeah. Uh, MTSU is being thrown out. MTSU used to be in the Sun Belt as well. I, for that reason, I don't see them coming back in. Um, the, the Artie says the American is warmed over Conference USA. Yep. Yep. And Ben is saying also a state plays Tulsa in football this year and American is adding army. And yeah, you, you mentioned SMU Marv, they're going to be out and they're going to the ACC. So. And yeah. I mean, I would have, there's other, there's going to be more realignment more than likely in some of the power four conferences, um, you know, Clemson and Florida state are, you know, kind of flirting with leaving the ACC. I don't think realignment's over yet. And once again, no, not far from over. It might uh, not be an ACC in two years. Well, it's a great Atlantic Atlantic Coast Conference when you have two West Coast teams. That makes a ton of sense. Uh, <laughs> yeah. but, and a Texas awesome. school and SMU. Yeah, but no, honestly, if, if you could get those two schools, Memphis and ECU, that's a no-brainer slam dunk. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Artie says Texas State does not want Tarleton in conference. I can see that, right? You don't want – I don't want Tarleton in the conference. I don't either. They don't, they don't bring anything for me personally. And so for that reason, I'm out (laughs) as a shark would say on uh, shark tank. Uh, I love uh, university of central Arkansas. Great softball. Yeah. I didn't, you know, those non-revenue sports like that aren't going to sway the the meter. I think you're going to have to come in and be fully on board and committed to football being your number one sport. And then they don't care in this conference, obviously, if you're any good in basketball. Let's just be honest. That it's just not a basketball conference right now. Um, and we saw that with the lack of respect. App State's great record got them, right? They weren't they, even they, a conversation. They, 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 to be Lord. Yeah. Sam, you won a game in the tournament. Yeah. 
Yeah, they did. They did. And uh, now all coaches from this conference are gone and good players from this conference are gone. So don't go down that rabbit hole, Seth. And no, I'm I'm cashed out tonight. I'm cashed out. Yeah. <laughs> Already saying uh, University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley, UTRGV. It doesn't matter how you say it. It's always a mouthful. So whatever. Uh, they'd be the third biggest Sunbelt market after Atlanta with over one million in population. That's kind of crazy. Uh, what about UTSA? I don't think UTSA is going to they're, they're raising the flag right now because of where they're at. So they're not going to leave a conference where they're the number one team. Uh, to go anywhere else, if if you ask me, or he's asking about UTEP. I don't know. UTEP doesn't really excite me. El Paso is like way west. Yeah, in in Texas too. Like it just adds to travel cost, and they don't. Even with Texas State, to me, that's not regional enough. Texas is like a country, you know. Like just because they're both in Texas doesn't mean that it's a regional matchup at all. I I don't know. Maybe Artie can speak to that. If anybody even cares about UTEP over there at, at in San Marcos area. I don't think they do that. I think they'd rather see themselves play, you know, Texas and A and M and even some Louisiana schools over UTEP. I, I don't know, but uh, Rivertown, thanks us for the great show tonight. Love hearing your opinions on the Sun Belt. Have a great weekend, you as well. And we'd love to see your your prediction come true, I guess, and keep uh, Coastal up in those rankings and and keep. I mean, let's be honest. If Coastal's there, the Sun Belt automatically gets more respect, right? That's just yeah. how it works. If your top team is going to be your top team, then they got to keep up there and, and keep winning. But hey, Dom, uh, speaking of predictions, do you want to go yeah. ahead and do ours right now so we don't forget like last week? <laughs> yeah, as soon as we jump off, we'll we'll get those put together for sure. Uh, yeah, already saying too far. We books uh, New Mexico State is a thousand miles from San Marcos, literally. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's literally Texas is a country. Okay, guys, it's a whole country of. <laughs> Cultural, culturally and everything else like it's just not just because they're both in texas it makes sense so remember yeah, when uh, was in the conference what was that remember when idaho was in our conference oh, yeah God. yes i do it how did that make any sense it didn't yeah okay you boy car saying anybody but mcnees yeah, I don't. I don't know if anyone's throwing out McNeese, but I know that at one point in time that they were one of the better FCS teams, and I guess some people had thought that they could possibly move up. San Marcos is closer to Chicago than it is. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy to think about that. That is crazy to think about that. And Ben is saying Coastal is overrated. We tend to agree with you thus far, but still a lot of baseball to play. We just went through contenders, pretenders, and we'll see what kind of things. Uh, come out of all of those predictions before we wrap it up here, guys, any last closing thoughts from you guys? I'm good. Yeah. Excited excited to uh, next three weeks are going to be really crucial. Excited to see it. Yeah, absolutely. I know, I know that there was a game on this Tuesday. I was going to try and make it to my son's birthday is Wednesday because I was planning on going to the ODU ECU game. And I was going to ask you if you would, Go with me, Marv, but, you know, you can't swing it when your kid's going from five to six years old. That's just going to be a big no-no with the wife. <laughs> Is that Tuesday night, next Tuesday? Uh, that's Wednesday night. There's a, there's a game locally Tuesday that I was going to try and swing to, but I can't remember exactly who it was right now. I, I could swing Wednesday, but not Tuesday. We got a baseball game Tuesday, but we we'll to uh, – I, I would oh, like yeah. to get in Greenville. I mean, heck, it's an hour from my house. I grew yeah. up in Greenville, so. Yeah, I think it would be fun to go to, but – Unfortunately, this year it ain't going to work out for me to get to ECU. So we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that about wraps it up for this weekend's, well, this week's episode right before this weekend's games get going. And we will see you guys all next week, probably at a date that we usually go on. <laughs> yeah, that should work. We'll see if we get back to the earlier week so we can wrap up the weekend games and give you a better talk about what we're going to expect in the midweek. So until next time, See you guys later.